Right, how are we doing all? Uh, today's job is an 18 ton road sweeper that took a roundabout a little bit too fast and Ooh. ended up on his side. Lovely. Ooh. It's not like being woken up by Darren, is there? Yeah, I think a worse crunk would be that. Right, so Daniel was actually already on scene. He was in the wrecker, G91 we did this with. So he was he got there first and then I got the call because he needed a little bit of help. So Daniel has been working his butt off to progress within the company and he's now actually so I, I believe he's more like our reserve heavy driver. So he's a jack of all trades. Take one. You want one you need one of the little uh take that policy all over. My choice got your hard out there. Even if your head gets knocked off. Oh, you got so Daniel's there? been oh, progressing yeah. fantastically and he's he's a safe pair of hands. You know I mean he's been on plenty of big jobs with me. But I believe this is probably the biggest rollover that Daniel's done on his own. So when I say done on his own, um, I mean Daniel being on the levers, actually being in control of the rollover. So road sweepers are an absolute pig to roll back over. So normally on most motors, when you're rolling the same back onto its wheels, where you attach the strops, there's plenty of room on the chassis. You can, you can take your pick of where you want to attach the strops and the chain and so on. Road sweepers are different. Road sweepers, the underside is absolutely jam-packed full of sweepers, um, brushes, suction boxes, so on. And then when they fabricate these vehicles, they actually rem they change position of a lot of things, like the air tanks, the air dryers, certain valves, brake valves. A bit. They'll all change it and actually fill it up. So if you look there, actually, there's very little room to actually attach any chains or straps. So, in the rigging process, so we obviously took our time, um, we thought about where we were going to attach things, but before we actually rolled it completely onto its wheels, we decided to lift it slightly, check the underside, Let the catch out a bit. make sure it's all good, and then commit to the roll. So here we are now. We've done that, checked the underside, Daniel's now back on the controls, and we're starting to lift this. Yeah, mate. Obviously, this is the biggest rollover that Daniel's done in charge of, actually on the controls, so I'm next to him the whole time. Should he be unsure about anything, I'm there just for guidance. You know, guidance and maybe a little bit of reassurance. But, you know, you can see from the video, it's coming over nice and smooth. Daniel's in control the whole time. You get the usual creaks and groans. Um, obviously, a vehicle's not desired to be flipped onto their side. So when you are writing them, there's always a lot of groaning and creaking and a couple of bangs, but it's all normal, you know. There we go, see, there's a start on a, the weight starting to transfer now. There you go, that was a weight transfer, you know. That was pretty much seamless. Seamless, you can't fault that. Credit where credit's due. Daniel's good. You know, you will struggle, you play back this video, you will struggle to see that weight transfer. It was pretty much seamless. So now it's just a case, we're on the catch, and we'll just let that cable out. Go on, go, let it out all the way. There she goes. Let her out. Also, positioning the vehicle on, on this was pretty much bang on. Blowing a little bit more on trumpet, but eh, it's my video, I'm allowed to. When you're rolling the vehicle over, you want it to, when it comes over to be nice and tight up to the back of the vehicle. Much closer than that. Well, what? Obviously, if you have your crane further out than it needs to be, you put excess pressure on the crane, excess pressure on the kit, you know. So you want it to roll over nice and tight to the back of the vehicle. The crane doesn't need to be any further extended than it has to be. There we go. Huh? Give it fucking up. Let them cables out now. Well done, mate. Now it's just the arduous task of de-rigging. That was well controlled. No one likes de-rigging. <laughs> you know, it's... Oh, it's f***ing heavy. It's hours of work for 30 seconds of glory. Well, that was f***ing hell. Yeah. Is that a 15-tonner? No. 18. She was a heavy old lump. I got... You know, she really was a heavy old lump, this. Is that a piece of It was... 
I was going to say, because we tried to lift the back of that, That's and really, one came... And it didn't... So it was full of dirt, but not just normal dirt. It was actually really, really fine. Really fine and moist. It was, it was like concrete. It was really heavy. It was a really heavy lump to roll over this. Surprisingly, in fact. But um, it came over nice. That's just case now. Put the grain away. Put them cables away. But, of course, the job was never just done with the rollover. It's now a case of de-rig and now prep for the onwards recovery. Which a lot of times is the hardest thing to do. So you've had your high from the rollover and then you've de-rigged and normally you start to dip, you know what I mean? Your adrenaline's dipping. Now it's just a case that it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a slog, really. This bit on most rollers, I always find it's the... Oh, God, I mean, It can be quite difficult as well because as the rollover goes over, you don't know what airlines have gone. You could, you could have a good two hours off of work yet ahead of you, so... It's not like a nice and simple lift and tow, where you're always guaranteed when you turn up, boom. Lift it, pedestals, forks, chains, air, half shaft lights, and away you go. This thing's been flipped onto its side, so you don't know what damage has been done. Our airline's ripped out left, right, and centre. Will it even take air? Will it want to roll? Um, you know? You know, sometimes you can pop a tyre. You can pull a tyre off the bead and then you've got a flat tyre when you roll something over. All these things can, can happen. Fortunately, this video came over quite nice. Um, it took air. The suspension wasn't great for some reason. It, it sat a bit skew if. But um, it was only going you know, about 15 minutes down the road, so it's not the end of the world. One thing that one additional thing we had to do with this, so when it came round the roundabout and flipped onto its oh, sides, it actually skidded so it was across the road, which was handy for the rollover, you know, means it was across the road, so it, was, that aided us in the rollover, but obviously right, before down, we could down, slow down, slow down. prep it for the recovery, we had to actually drag the front end around. So obviously where it's facing now, it's facing into the barrier, into the bushes, uh, you're not going to get your tear in there, it's, you know, it's, it's awkward. It, so, winch cable back out, chain onto the front towing pin, and drag this 18 tonner around. There we go, cable attached. Now you see the front start to come around now. The front's actually coming around quite nicely. Normally, you know, well, well, a, fully, a fully loaded 18 tonne vehicle, it'd be a, a bit of a pull to drag a front end around, but, this thing's been on its side. There's diesel everywhere, but also hydraulical. You combine diesel and hydraulical, and you've got a very slippery surface, so you can see there that, that front is just sliding around. Daniel jumped in to see if he could uh, help it. It didn't make a blind bit of difference. The winch cable was dragging it around. Slippery surface. There she comes. And that is uh, facing the right way now for us to. Uh, Prep it for towing to the customer's destination. Love a bit of oil and water. Stop it. Right, winch cable away again. There we go. Daniel yawning there. I'm telling you, this is when you start the flag. Really, done. The vehicles on the ball stands. T no. head underneath the vehicle. Get the forks in position. There we go. Chained her down. Put the wheel stands away. Plum air into her, and at this point is when you open and pray that she takes air. Everyone's tired. Everyone just wants to go home. I mean, we got the call out for this about two o'clock in the morning, so you know, adrenaline keep, gets you going, keeps you going for the first. Adrenaline keeps you going for the first four hours. After four hours, you need caffeine. 
So you can probably see now, the sky's starting to brighten up just that little bit. You know morning's coming. job this to be fair I didn't too much appreciate the call out at two o'clock in the morning but um, that's the industry mate that's the joys of the job but it came over okay uh, Daniel did very well luckily this actually took air suspension raised the brakes released so that was lovely Daniel unfortunately had to take the customer's de destination it wasn't too far it was about 15 minutes down the road, so not the end of the world. And uh, yeah, if I'm honest, I got I got out of there breakneck speed, and I was into bed. So, um, but no, good job. Uh, I hope it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Let me know if you want a more lift and tow videos where I explain or try to show you different ways of towing something whatever you want drop a comment down below and uh, I'll do my best alright nice one thank you for watching take care bye